right, it's December 27th, 2020. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Live, the Bear Podcast with Andrew Turbo Lakes, episode number 583. And what better way to end the year than uh, me actually doing the intro right? <gasps> It's oh, a no, Christmas right? miracle. <laughs> a couple days out of that. And, I, and just to let you guys know, this is the last episode of the year. I just want to let you know. Da, da, da. So uh, <laughs> last we, we, we are taking a hiatus until next year, but we'll be back the first Sunday of next year, which just happens to be next Sunday. Anyways, let's find out this. I'm dreaming of a themed Christmas. The fact that all my Christmas, uh, as the fact that all my Christmas presents were themed because they were all involving cooking. Ah. Uh, I got a rice cooker for my sister. I got. Uh, sheet pans with racks for my brother, and I got a uh, set of silicon, uh, silicone, con, con, uh, 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 cooking utensils. All this was on my wish list. So I, I wanted all these. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. We finished the besides D uh, my Sunday D and uh, finished the. Uh, Horde of the Dragon Queen module, and we're in the process of transitioning to the Rise of Tiamat module, which is the sequel. Um, so, um, yeah, which we did earlier today. You want to see that? Check out Bears and Dragons. So, there's a playlist on, on our thing. So, if you, if you want to watch it all, wow. all 21 episodes. There's a playlist on our YouTube channel, yeah. Cubs Out Loud. <laughs> Let's, let's, let's get generally. the promotion right. right. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm assuming that the people who are who are watching this live will be. The, I mean, th that's the only down below, if anything. So, but yeah. Uh, otherwise, same old, same old. That's it. Short, sweet, to the point. Oh. David. Okay. <laughs> Um, I titled this one Holiday Hoorays. Um, so I've been talking about the Men's Course concert. We finally got it done. It did really well. It's still doing very well. If you haven't had a chance to listen to it, go ahead and listen to it. It's available at YouTube, um, the Cincinnati Men's Course um, YouTube channel, our r, &R um, website. Ding! Um, uh, What's that so website, So far, CincinnatiMen'sChorus.org. CincinnatiMensChorus.org. Um, unfortunately, it is that long. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, all you need, to, uh, honestly, just figuring out Cincinnati is going to be the hard part. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, we've been raising. You know, it's, uh, the concert is free, but it is part of a you know fundraiser for us as well. And I looked uh, earlier. I think yesterday. I haven't looked today. I'm very curious to see if we've made the goal. We we reached our original two goals. We've surpassed both of them. We're now at a third goal, um, um, which is amazing. So I'm really happy about that. So hooray for that. Um, um, Jim and I did our Christmas at home, and our for his family, we did a... Um, Secret Santa gift exchange, which went really well, considering we weren't doing it in person. Um, and we, you know, it went, I think it went really well. I got, um, as I posted on my Facebook, um, with Jim's gift and the gift from my Secret Santa on his side of the family, I've gotten three um, d and um, um, fifth edition books. Um, which is really awesome because I like the I like sometimes having the physical copy in my hand so I can mm -hmm. look at stuff. Um, and so I also kind of had a themed um, holiday <laughs> or themed Christmas as well 
because these are things that I did ask for. Um, and then um, yesterday, um, my brother came to visit, um, and um, he was staying at a hotel because he wanted to, whatever. And we went and had dinner with him and exchanged our gifts with his, um, him and his wife and my mom. And then he gave us um, their gifts to us, uh, which was a bunch of wonderful liquor. Um, Jim got some Jim Beam. I got a really interesting rum that sounds delicious. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a very fun and festive new year, I should say. I'm going to probably crack that fucker open around New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. Because it, it sounds delicious. What's it called? Yeah. That makes it sound delicious. Um, Bumboo? Ooh, let me look that name up before I say it wrong. Yeah, it is Bumboo. B-U-M-B-U. But I'm going to... Hopefully I can get here really quickly. Yes. The tasting notes say this. Um, sweet notes. Uh, it just jumped on me, fucker. There it is. Okay. Sights loading. And then mm. also sweet notes of vanilla, caramel, and subtle oak on the nose. The flavor is decadent with notes of chocolate, banana, and baking spices such as cinnamon throughout the palate. Mm. The finish is smooth with light sweet notes. It sounds good and um my brother loves it he's had it before um he said he he would actually drink it straight which is odd for me for a rum but eh, i like I'll do it. I mean, yeah it sounds good i like bum yes anyway bum 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 um <laughs> so with regards to yeah we, we, missed me judgmentally. <laughs> we missed the joke entirely so we are three percent away from our third goal the chorus is which oh, okay. was um yeah so very cool very awesome yay, yay. gary um i had said uh hours to go Mm -hmm. We're recording this on December 27th. Uh, that means that there are three full days, right? No, four full days. Four, mm -hmm. days. four full days. Uh, and then we conclude what has been the experience of the year <laughs> 2020. True. I do not know yet if that means people will be able to actually bookend their opinions about 2020. My concern is, is that things will carry over into next year and people will be just as frustrated for 2021. Yeah. But if anything, we'll always look at this uh, 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 in hindsight. True. Sure. That's very true. Yes. Um, so hindsight this month... Uh, 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 no. Okay. Uh... uh Someone has something on its mind. Uh, <laughs> this month, I'm trying to think what all happened this month. Um, work was very busy. Uh, yeah, and then the, like with the holiday coming up, um, uh, I guess I'll talk about it because it's been uh, announced. So this past week. Uh, actually, I'll go back two weeks ago. Um, I had been notified that uh, um, my dog daughter, uh, uh -huh. Zoe, uh, Jeff and Ronnie's um, mm -hmm. four-legged uh, baby, uh, I had asked because uh, she's been doing um, chemo treatments for the past couple of months um, and uh, was notified that um, her bounce back was was not as good. And um, that they uh, were a little concerned because she was getting slower. There were some behavior things. Um, so they took her in. Um, and unfortunately, uh, last week, they had to make the decision to uh, say goodbye. Mm. So um, that was really kind of last week for me. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah. So 
Yeah. It's it's been a thing. Um, you know, you just kind of work through that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Just a lot of like reflection and thinking about you know uh, the responsibilities, you know, and um, the commitments and the connection that you make and and that kind of stuff. So that was a a bummer to that. And they had made the decision to not say anything until after Christmas because, um, you know, they were uh, not wanting to you know put a damper on people's Christmas, mm-hmm. so to speak. So, um, but yeah. She um she was very, 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 very special. Um unique and extraordinary were kind of some ways that she was uh described because of her personality. Um, yeah. She was adorable. She was. Yeah. Yeah. So uh that was that was kind of the one of those things, you know, and I feel for them because I think there are some people out there that are like uh, possibly in this, um, I don't know, in this state of like, you know, can't catch a break for nothing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, yeah. you just you keep you keep trying and trying, and uh, you know, things aren't kind of lining up. You you know, the year was kind of crappy um, all yeah. around for a lot of folks. Uh, so you know, you're like, what 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 gives on that? So. Yeah. yeah, 2020 was a, for, I, I, I'll just say 2020 was a hell of a year. I think just to kind mm-hmm. of like really simplify it, um, a lot going on, a lot of, I know we'll, we'll probably do a, or maybe we will post a um, like year in review, maybe possibly, but to kind of quickly do like the small thing, like it was, it was a hell of a year. A lot happened, a lot going on, a lot of, um, I think, external and internal like things, mm-hmm. and having to, or because of situations, having to kind of pay attention to those things. Where, you know, if things had been the way they were, in some ways, we might not have had to. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, um, I know we'll probably have a year review episode. Um, maybe we'll talk about it, or or we can really just you know, fuck it. Like, like let's just well, be well, honest. I, I believe that's our next one. <laughs> yeah, traditionally we, we do say, our year in review beginning of the next year. So year year twenty twenty, fuck it. Like, and just <laughs> I mean, we could you know just. Play a whole bunch of fart sounds and uh... <laughs> January, February. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Good night, kids. <laughs> Cue the indie music. And... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um, scary. So okay. I mean, for 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 me, you know, um, I mean, I, I spent. The day at uh, Christmas at home. Um, actually, uh, I went for dinner over to um, uh, the boys' house. Uh, Vince uh-huh. and Richie and Kyle uh, had invited me because um, Vince was actually off for the first time in years um, <laughs> on the holiday. Well, he's you know worked in emergency medical, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and so he actually was naturally off that day, and uh, so he had contacted me late in the afternoon. He was like, what are your plans for today? I'm like, I'm you know, watching some movies, you know, diddling in the kitchen, making some different stuff and you know, washing dishes. I mean, just, you know, nothing really special. <laughs> also, there was a snowstorm happening outside, basically. Not a <laughs> storm, like a lot of snow was falling. So mm-hmm. um, he uh, he's like, well, apparently I made food for an army. So you are welcome to come over if you would like. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's All what right. I did. I went over and had dinner, and we sat and talked for a few hours, and um, then you know got out and cleaned off my car again, and <laughs> carefully drove back home. Um, yeah, so uh, 
you know, nobody was really planning on going anywhere or doing anything, which was to be expected. Like the weather, I think, helped um, keep a lot of like travel and, and different stuff of, of that uh, type thing down mm-hmm. for us. So, yeah, probably a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's funny you guys are talking about, like, uh, themed gifts. So I sort of had themed um, stuff. Uh, Jeff and Ronnie got me a, an eight-quart stock pot, but it comes with a metal uh, strainer, mm-hmm. like a removable metal uh, liner strainer mm-hmm. to it. Um, mm-hmm. I had been at their home earlier this year, and they have one. I think there's just, like, a 10 or a 12-quart. And I really liked using it, and I commented on it. So, what up? Mm-hmm. I um, nice. uh, yeah. And uh, what else? Oh, Drew um got me an enameled uh handcrafted like pottery uh mug. Um, ah. So yeah, I um, hey, you know, nothing, nothing, you know, really big or extravagant. Oh, I finally <laughs> picked up, not on Christmas, but previous to that, um, I got my uh. Apple uh, HomePod Minis, uh-huh. mini HomePods, because I had ordered them way back at the beginning of November when they went on sale, and then they arrived when I was not home. Um, of course they did. Well, and <laughs> I, you know, uh, had contacted Vince and was like, "Hey, so packages are arriving today, apparently that are supposed to arrive on Tuesday." Um, I'm not home and I was concerned about them getting up and walking away. Not that my neighborhood is a bad neighborhood, but it is the season when yeah, it is the people season. Are, yeah. are more inclined to take other people's stuff. Not mm-hmm. cool. So, uh, so anyways, he picked them up and they were at their home. So <laughs> I just kind of kept going to work and coming home and like not really thinking about <laughs> it or caring. And now you had a chance to go over when... By the way, was it was the food dining need actually enough to feed an army? Uh, I mean, army is the relative term, <laughs> but there was a lot. Yeah, I mean, there was more than enough for the four of us. In fact, uh, it was funny because some went back for seconds, and mm-hmm. then uh, I don't know how else to say this. Uh, there was some um, Schadenfreude or whatever uh, 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 the part of those that didn't go back for seconds listening to the, the ones that did go back about their belly aching because they ate too much. Mm. <laughs> blomp, blomp. Because there was, I mean, there was, I mean, we could have fed eight. Okay. There was enough food to feed 12 people, but everybody would have gotten like not quite a full plate. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, there was plenty, especially for the four of us. And so, yeah, fair. Um, it was it, and it wasn't like meant to be for a big group. It was just somebody got a little carried away, apparently. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, serving sizes are hard. hard, but you also have to, to factor in bareness. Yes, I'm aware, but so again, anyways. Shall we yeah. move into the feedback? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebook ish land? <laughs> uh, well, so uh, over on Instagram, uh, we got a series of followers. Some of them just in the past couple days because uh, I was updating this list. So we would like to thank the following individuals for following us on Instagram Fred Wustoff. Griff1024, I know him, Garth <laughs> underscore Jensen, know him, uh, someone with the nick boxcub underscore col. Really? Oh, I wonder who that could be. I'm hoping it's not someone like posing as somebody else because that shit gets yeah, real that, annoying. That, that, that's okay. mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> I got a finger, know. but <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I was like, wait a minute, did somebody take my name? And they go, oh no, that's what I used. <laughs> yeah. Uh, PC Uncle Pete, uh, so good friend of mine, uh, previous guest of the pod, uh, Ooh. back when we did an LTAS and we talked food. about food, uh, Uncle, Uncle Pete. Pete was on then, um, 
So mm-hmm. that's uh, his paper chip thing. Uh, the underscore Goshenar. Goshenar. Mm-hmm. And the last one, Tags Bear, which, mm. Damon, you and I know Tags Bear. Yes. Yes. So, um, yes. He does uh, really you. nice line uh, artwork. Geometric artwork, yes. And, like, just, like, figure drawing and stuff, too. But, yeah. Yeah, I met him at Claw uh, three years ago, I want to say. Um, ah. He was volunteering at the uh, vlogging session I went to. Um, but he was the he was the person, you know, that um, organizes, like, gives out the feedback survey. Mm-hmm. Like, that volunteer role, not like... Oh, not like... Right. Okay. Right, right. <laughs> Um, so like, bad as I'm sort of, like doing this. I'm like, anyway, no, it's all right. So we, uh, but we chatted because um, I'd seen him around before, and he's a cutie. And um, he was telling me about this thing that he was doing with the the crawler, the growler pick, uh, artwork stuff. That I was like, <laughs> yeah, like that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so that's how that's we met. Fun. But um, so there's that. Uh, nothing really to say uh, per se over on Facebook. Proper. Mm. Damon? So we got several comments on our um, episode um, 580, which was the sides. Let's talk about sex sides episode. So from Owen, we received the comment of, I'm going to have to look that up, look up that Facebook group. Interesting conversation. I've never really been, I've never really been interested in penetration myself. What are you sidedness? Oh, gosh. Oh, I hope we get to a point where someone asks me this question. Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, and then we got um, some comments from Din Din. Hello, Din Din. And it says, the way I, I be having conversations, and it has, it has, I'm a Gemini, and then it has it slashed out. So I kind of just want to, like, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> The way I be having conversations and shading y'all, I need to catch y'all live. I might be side pus OMG. Yeah. It's a very it was a very interesting um topic. And I think it kind of sheds some light on things that you you might, you know, you yourself might be found your 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 title, your your oh your God, new word. Side. Yeah. And then from Rangers King 669, it says, um, just for reference, the H word is considered a slur for intersex people. Just letting you all know, great show. And then Owen responded, huh, I didn't know that. Yes, um, it it can be. It was, It that's one of the reasons why like, we start using the word intersex now. Um, I think Gary, you were talking about it from when you first found out about it. I was, but I want to own that like this was a this was an educational opportunity for me because I don't know individuals who are, and just like as individuals have been learning about you know uh, the trans community, so to speak, mm-hmm. I, you know, and and um, other groupings, I didn't know that the word had been replaced, so to speak, mm-hmm. and that there was. A reference within probably about a week of us doing that show, uh, I saw on Twitter, at my work Twitter, I should say, um, because that one is specific to the work I do with um, HIV. I follow a lot of different um, Twitter accounts and LGBTQ like causes and things of that nature. And someone had posted, and I now that I think about it, I really wish I'd saved it for the show. Uh, a great graphic, and it showed all the old terms and all the like current terms, like how. Things mm-hmm. have been replaced, so like we don't say transvestite, um, mm-hmm. and 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 uh, in amongst them was hermaphrodite, which is the word I used. Now, when Ranger Skin uh, six six nine had submitted this comment, I saw the notification come through, and it didn't click. I was like, H word. I was like, what, what H word? And it took me a while to like put the puzzle back together. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't come right away in the moment. Uh, so I thank, you know, uh, Rangers, uh, King 669 for submitting the, the comment and kind of pointing that out. Cause it is true. And I think it just goes to show like, there's always things to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, and I didn't realize that, you know, in the moment that I had said that I wasn't trying to be disparaging or, um, you know, crude or anything. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, it was just, it was the last thing I had known of. And while I'd heard of intersex, I never made that connection, I guess, or like Mm -hmm. paid attention to, to what that, uh, what that was. So I, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was a good point that someone, you know, made that, uh, you know, pointed that out for us and I appreciate it very much because I was like if I hadn't if it no one had said it I wouldn't I probably would have gone on to being an ignorant ass you know and just kept saying <laughs> stuff that I wasn't supposed yeah. to or shouldn't probably yeah. so well and yeah. now we know not something we commonly talk about here either so yeah um, I don't think it's discussed very much at all so yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think that w- that's kind of more the the issue for folks is, and that's I mean, it's interesting that it also came about in the sideshow. Um, mm-hmm. You know, a topic area that I think is new-ish mm-hmm. um, for folks. I did end up joining that Facebook group um, pretty much on the daily. There are people finding it and joining it um, for various reasons, mm-hmm. uh, and the the background is is pretty wide uh in terms of like the types of people um you know generationally and and some other stuff and so there are uh folks that are joining that i think are i don't want to say it's like going to be a revolution or anything but i will say that i think when you have the discussion with men um you know with msm uh about this idea that there may be more that i don't want to say more to it but I think there may be more individuals that are like, oh, I didn't realize this was an option. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really key for like, you know, people claiming and owning themselves and their identity to say, you know what? Like, I'm not really kind of down with that. Like, that's not my gig. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> and there's yeah. nothing, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we had we had the discussion went back in the show about, you know, like some people are into nipple play. Other people are not. Mm-hmm. Um you know, and it's more, I think, about, like, you know, as we said then, to ask the question, you know, mm-hmm. what, are you, what is it that you enjoy? What are you into? Um, and... I suppose the, the new abbreviation should be TBVS, top, bottom, versus side, question mark, with a slash <laughs> between, between them. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, like we said, maybe back in the episode, I think I kind of made a reference, like, if you are going to solely focus on sex and the end goal is to have an orgasm then i think the labeling becomes like paramount like it becomes a a necessity because someone whoever the one is that like wants to you know have the orgasm kind of probably wants to know the lay of the land like what is the possibility of what will happen Mm. yeah and and the, the, the thing is is i'm actually in my uh Gamer Bears uh, Discord that I'm a part of. Uh, there's been a conversation about position fluidity, which I think is something which I don't think anybody's really thought about, but I think is pretty, pretty much a just a general thing for everybody. Is everybody I think is at least somewhat uh, positionally fluid. In the fact that sometimes you feel like a top, sometimes you don't. Yeah. You know, uh, it's fair. You, you know, in the in the end, you still get a night, but uh, sometimes you feel like a bottom, <laughs> sometimes you don't, and sometimes you just don't feel like either. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's just what is it at the moment, and and having all those labels just for like. This is where I want to be now. Mm-hmm. Isn't I primarily this, but I could be this and and that. So, yeah. so the, oh. I I just think everything's a little more fluid than than people think. Actually, almost everything is I think is pretty much fluid, anyways. But that's besides the point. All right, moving on. Uh, we've got a uh, few new, couple new Twitter followers. We got Bobby Bear uh, twenty three hundred, uh, Leather Lover N E, uh, A W Q underscore Owen, uh, and we've got a we were tagged 
uh, by Fish Fluff saying that. Cubs Out Loud, this is Din Din Mushi calling honorable panel members for an emergency meeting regarding Pornhub's latest fuckery. You're welcome. <laughs> we did that last week. <laughs> well, that's why that was, it says... That was, on, that was on December 15th before we actually did our show, right. uh, which I... uh, last week, which which covered it. So uh, you're welcome, didn't it? Um, <laughs> speaking of shows... Mm-hmm. Gary, give us a review of, uh, of the the recent shows this month. Uh, so our last what's uh, going on uh, was 579 when we talked about the month of November. And then we had the infamous 580. Um, let's talk about sex sides. And then we did a uh, on 581. We did our favorite things 2020. So we kind of talked about like things that were recommendations to other folks that we uh, particularly uh, endorse or care for. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, then last week, yes, we discussed in 582, uh, it was titled rest in peace, X tube slash porn hub question mark. Um, and the reason like the question mark is I don't think it's definitive yet. If people are just going to abandon those online, uh, location platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say this, uh, the emotions of the changes that took place have not uh, diminished per se or gone away. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I also think I will... because of the season and and because of some of the notes I saw about like we we did this and we're gonna do some things to help smooth things over, but not until next year, <laughs> which doesn't help. Yeah. Well, and my feeling on it is: Do you know how many millions of people? are trying to get through the pandemic and are trying to stay socially distant mm -hmm. at home by themselves mm -hmm. having <laughs> personal <laughs> moments personal moments <laughs> well i'm presuming personal moments i don't I mean they could be shared moments i don't know um Maybe people didn't see it but i did have x hamster behind me in my, our, our skype chat uh, which is, is which, which, as far as I can tell, was not affected at all. Yeah, I don't believe this. so. But... Mainly because they're a completely separate company; they're not they're not affiliated. Mm -hmm. um, the only familiarity is that they also have porn, and uh, they have an X in the name. That's about it. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 <laughs> so that accident was, from Pornhub and X Tube <laughs> over to X Hamster. Yeah. We'll see. I know some people have decided to um, move their things under um, paid sites, like just for fans and only fans. Um, others uh, have. Yeah, like David, uh, uh, someone that we, well, we don't know personally, we might want to know. Uh, has talked about they're over on the west coast. Um, oh, yeah, put on a big event, used to. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> corona, uh, anyways, <laughs> sorry, COVID is what I should say. Anyways, they um, they said they basically took their entire catalog and put it on OnlyFans, mm -hmm. and yeah. they basically, you know, said if you would like to see more of this, uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. It's like six ninety nine a month. There, I don't know something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, it, so, and I just a quick thing before we move on. Um, and maybe this is a whole topic to come. Prior to the pandemic, I had one opinion about OnlyFans, just for fans, those type of mm -hmm, sites. Mm -hmm. Now that we've reached the end of twenty twenty, <laughs> uh, and um, you know, dealing with the the coronavirus pandemic, uh, I have a different attitude about OnlyFans and just for fans, the sites. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's another show. I mean, it could be. I, I have a, I have a feeling be. if I want to like make my statement that there, this could lead into a whole conversation. Yeah, so that's why. So let's not. <laughs> Okay. Uh, should we should we just well, like that? But that's another show. But that's another show. That's another yeah, show. we might as well. We'll just we'll just call that 
that's another show. To and, be determined, and, shall we? To be determined. TBD. All right. With that, because I, I have some opinions too. So okay. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. On the calendar, Gary. Anyways, let's move into this. <laughs> There we go. Enough of that. Uh, yeah, time to, to to tweet tweet with our Twitter posts. Uh, mine uh, is uh, find a man who does this, and it's a video, and it's of a guy who's uh, uh, fucking a guy, and then he pulls out to bend over and suck the guy, and kind of bounces back, and I'm like, oh, okay, wait, sweet. what? I know. I gotta see this. Hold on. So he's fucking the so, guy, and then he pulls yeah, out, I, uh-huh, bends forward, suck and him. sucks at the guy, and then goes back in. So find the guy who will do both. Is that what we're saying? Or at the at, at during in uh, yeah like it kind of does the alter, like at, alternate it, it, so it, just 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 fucking you like has this like mixture of of fucking and sucking. So there okay. is a reply to this uh, where somebody yeah. says or find somebody who can do this and it's basically a uh, a twink fucking somebody somebody else as well as sucking at the exact same time. Um, Which is probably even better. The only problem is is with most of the guys that have it that I would want to be uh, fucking me. I would all and and sucking me would have too big of a belly to be able to bend like that and and do it. it they wouldn't be able to torsion like that unless they were really skinny. And it's just not my jam. I'm sorry. Well, I was just gonna say my favorite reply in the thread is easier said than done. Yeah, it, which is essentially what I'm saying. I mean yep. that one, yes. The doing that at the same time. I mean, depending on the sizes of certain people, like it could be possible. But it's after called a flexibility. Point, yeah, yes. yeah. It's it could be done. It can be done. It's just going to take the right like physics, math. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, but I actually found it, it, it extremely hot seeing. Seeing the one guy uh, kind of like do the alternation, you know, fuck for a little bit and then suck a little bit, then fuck a little bit, suck a little bit. Obviously, it's looping, so it's not exactly the whole thing, but basically gives you a more attention instead of just like fucking and jerking you. It it also uh, giving you a blowjob as well. So. Mm -hmm. The top two, you right. And, and, and for for you top or for you tops, hey, this might uh, help you out a bit. Challenge has been thrown down, apparently. <laughs> Challenge accepted, apparently. Uh... And that's my thing. Okay. Okay. Good times. What the fucking? All right. Um, Damon, what do you got? Um, I titled mine "Tis the Season," and it is from Jersey Rugger. And um, oh wait, this is the wrong one. Fuck you. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> boop, boop. No. Well, nice. this is fine. I'll use this one. It's fine. It's fine. It'll do it. You can do so both. it's not called "Tis the Season." Uh, I'd have to find the other one, and I, I lost where it was. But this one's fine. It's fine. Whatever. This one is called Mary Thickmas. I'm going to have to change the title. Um, and it is um, from Jer Jersey Rigger, and it's a very um, beefy man in his red and green um, um, bearded and, and beautiful. So, yes. Yeah. All thick and stuff. I'd have to see if I can find it because I don't even know if I can find it at this point. Because of course I was putting them on a notepad and I just deleted the notepad. Ah well. Anywho, so that's that. Um, 
if I can find it, I will see if I can find it. But we're gonna. I'm not gonna waste the time. Anyway, what was the What was the image? Um, it was one of mine. It was a guy in the snow. Um, oh. not one of mine, but it was a guy in like the snow. It's it's one of these ones. Give me a second. I'll see if I can find it. Continue, continue. Go ahead, Gary. Or talk about mine. Talk about this one because I do like it. I mean, it is a hot guy. No, I agree. Like, uh, it did send to the live chat. Or no, sorry, Owen said to the live chat. Oh God, those arms. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yes. Well, by the way, you spelled it wrong. That should be two C's, not a C and a K. <laughs> right. Um, Din Din said, "Yes, Damon, we stand." So yes, he's he's a sexy man, and and I am a big fan of his so very much. Oh God, I think I'm close to finding it. This is what happens when you like post a bunch of shit on your Twitter. <laughs> but are you getting close? I think so. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. I'm busy scrolling through his uh, all his My video feet. post images. Well, I mean, it's good there. stuff to look at. There it is. Oh, oh. Well, that's I a big plant. <laughs> Here we go. Hold on. Let's just okay, do this real quick. Sorry, folks. Technical difficulties. Please stand by. Technical um, difficulties. Please stand by. Oh, and uh, he was part of Arrested Movement. Oh, the big guy? Our, our Mary yes. Sickness? Yeah, Jerry Jersey Rugger Ten. He was a uh, part of the Arrested Movement body positive uh, thing. Ah. He back on July 9th said, "Thank you, Anthony um, P. Miniri, and uh, for making me feel so comfortable and showing me that I have no reason to be ashamed of my body." Nice. Yeah. So I did finally find the other one, um, which was the actual one called "Tis the Season," um, and it is from "Pull My Beard." At pull my beard. Um, and it says, Tis the season question mark. And it says, I took this pick just for the knee sleeves and wrist, wrist wraps, but y'all can have it. And it is a very sexy man in snow with nothing on but the aforementioned knee sleeves and wrist wraps and tennis shoes and a Santa hat. And a, a strategically placed bow. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's gorgeous. And then have to Just so, add it to the, to the doc. We'll have two of them. I did. I did okay. add it. Just have to edit. Just, so I'm going to yeah, edit the first like link. Word, um, While he's doing that, Gary, what do you got? Uh, so, uh, the title of mine is Winter's Lullaby. Um, it's probably not as exciting, um, per se, or titillating, but, uh, I really love this artwork. Um, so, it's, uh, Nox Saturn, but it's N-O-X-S-A-T-V-R-N. Um, and it's an ink, watercolor, and acrylic on paper for this winter. So it has uh, this um, kind of pan character, mm-hmm. but done as a beefy bear um, with a winter scape around a couple of snow owls. Um, there's a chipmunk, a cardinal, um, uh, yeah. and two chipmunks, and uh, an uncut peen. And um, <laughs> it's 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 just really beautiful. Yeah. Um, I like how it's uh, evocative of like um, kind of like all the old gods, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, if you're if you're a person who is affiliated with or interested in um, the uh, like earthbound uh, spiritualities. Wiccan paganism uh, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. Like, yeah, um, 
So, and I've seen this kind of stuff done before, but honestly, I've mostly, if I recall correctly, I think it's always been women. Um, so I was just like, oh, well, hello. Like, that's very nice. Um, oh, he just got some of the, like he, there's some of the, there's a, another post, if you look at it, that kind of gets really close up on some things. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Wow. That's really pretty. I like that. I like it a lot, actually. I think it, it's it's yeah, like the winter and the yeah, it's 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 leaning up against the tree. It looks like yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, it's like ugh. very good details. Yeah, it's very very nice. Very nice. So uh, yeah, so that was the my Twitter pick this month because I was like. It, it's evocative, you know, it's it's tasteful art. Um, some might still want to try to classify it as erotica, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, there's a... Art. Yeah, there's there's definitely a line. Um, I'm, I'm reading through all the comment threads and people are, like, you know, very much in support. Um... Mm -hmm. I love it. Can I get Christmas cards like this? Uh, they did um, reply. The artist said, "I don't make cards yet at the moment." And, yeah. And like I'm saying, hint, hint. <laughs> like the artist is probably well aware, made a note, like you know, something yeah. to consider for you know future uh, revenue stream. Oh, someone mm -hmm. said they'd like it as a tattoo. I can see that. Ooh, wow. Yeah. That would be a pretty intricate tattoo. Hey, oh, if, you're, saying if you're don't willing have to get it, that I'm done. I'm just saying it's going to be intricate. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. Moving on into the links. Uh, guys, tell me what you found on streaming services this month. Uh, I got nothing. <laughs> <though>. <laughs> I notice I didn't say one specific because I noticed there's a there's a link that not on that service. So I broadly say <laughs> streaming services. Right. Damon. Yes. Um so a friend of mine on Facebook actually pointed this out to me. Um and it's called Canvas and it's on Netflix. Um it is a very short um um animated movie. Um, and, um, I don't, again, I can't, I don't want to give too much away, but it's just, it's, it's a very touching story and it, it, in its length, it gives you enough of what's going on to kind of put the pieces together to kind of understand just how fun and beautiful this story is. So you're so, saying it's an animated uh, short? Yeah. Animated short. Um. Um, now the, the thing was that people were saying that it wasn't getting a lot of, uh, it dropped on the Netflix and there wasn't a lot of, um, notification about it. Um, it does, um, have, it does have an after, yeah, promotion. That's what I've heard of before. Um, it does have, um, African American like faces and features. I, I'm, I don't know everything behind it. I don't know if African Americans wrote it or, or what have you, but it just the one of the reasons that I heard about it was because that people were saying that it was not getting enough it wasn't getting any promotion. Um but it is also a short, you know, feature that was presented on a, a Netflix that has like tons and tons of content. So but it is, I think it's worth a watch if you have, you know, nine minutes to just look at it. It's it's good. Check it out. Okay. Power family from the mind of Frank E. Abney the third. There we go. That helps. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I hadn't heard of it before, so be something to check out. Ah, he is an African American. There we go. There we go. So there you go. So go check it out. Gary. 
Uh, so, uh, similarly, question mark. Uh, I had seen a fair number of people that I was aware of sharing that Netflix um, had released Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which mm-hmm. I knew was based on a real person. Mm-hmm. I was I was minimally aware that Ma Rainey was a person. Um, mm-hmm. And was kind of considered had something affiliation to do with the blues, um, and I knew that Viola Davis was in the in the 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 title role, so I was down for it because that woman can like ugly cry like no one I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, she is like full bore atomic level like acting um, in practically any role she's ever had, I think. And I only learned of Viola, honestly, through um, How to Get Away with Murder, Mm -hmm. which is odd because she's had a a decent career, decent even the right word. Like she's she's um, comes from the stage and has done a lot of roles uh, and been in a lot of film uh, and television. Mm -hmm. So I just I don't know. I kind of slept on her weirdly somewhere uh, somehow. But anyways, uh, so I wanted to watch this and then I learned from watching it. That it is one of, I think, 10 films that are being made based on August Wilson plays. And mm-hmm. I don't recall, I don't think I've ever seen any August Wilson plays. So I was interested to see this from like kind of a couple different perspectives. Um, and I want people to go watch it uh, because there are some really poignant statements made through the film that were made through the play um Mm -hmm. and uh you know she's a real powerhouse to watch um when it was done so this is david where you said in pre-show you wanted to kind of know how i felt about it uh if you know that it's a film a movie of a play some things will make more sense Mm -hmm. because the one thing they did not do was try to, I guess I want to say movify it. I don't know what the right word is. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. So it is definitively on a real location. So it's not like you're watching a film of a stage production, Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. some of the things that happen do seem a little odd and by odd, I mean, like, if you're if you're a person who watches movies, you might be like, I don't understand why it's kind of being shot the way it is or why the, the transitions are kind of happening the way they do. Um, there's something that happens at the end of the film that just really uh, kind of confused me a little bit. But that's mm-hmm. because I was like, uh, I don't think it needed to go there. But then in my brain, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, but this is based on like okay. it's based on a person so i'm thinking mm-hmm. there's a real biography behind all of this mm-hmm. so that i went on wikipedia yeah. and whatever and i read up on on things and i kind of <laughs> timelined <laughs> like figured out when this film takes place in ma rainey's life and some other aspects so i think that august wilson took a little bit of liberty with some stuff um oh, in, in writing the play, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think if you were a person who was going into it for a historical context to be like, you know, again, everything that is told in the present mm-hmm. about the past will always be probably somewhat wrong, whether it's 5% wrong or a larger percentage because you just weren't there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah so I, I really uh, liked it and enjoyed it. I can't remember what the context is, but it was supposed to go – I thought it was supposed to get released in theaters. Um, mm. Denzel Washington is attached. I believe he's the one that's gotten the 10 picture deal. And I, if I recall correctly, it's all August Wilson um, plays that are being brought to film. Mm-hmm. Fences is the other one that he and Viola Davis were in, which I have yet to see. Um, but, you know, um, it's on my list. I'm going to get to it, obviously, after seeing this. And um, I think because of the pandemic, they pivoted. I think that was part yeah. of the the move and why they brought it over uh, to Netflix. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I really, really enjoyed it. And um, I I appreciate that uh, it's contextually, like, within the story of, like, one day. 
So you're really kind of, um, I don't want to say that time is stretched, but you, things are very different when you watch something that's more like real time than like, you know, most conventional entertainment is, you know, like people go to bed and they wake up the next morning and that, you know, like there's a passage of time. This is different. This is like a, a, a hot summer day um, in Chicago mm -hmm. and yeah. a lot of stuff happens in the course of like a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, August Wilson's plays are referred to as the Pittsburgh cycle. Or the century cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. And which, and he's, he's basically, uh, it, he was referred to as the theater's poet of black America. Um, he mm -hmm. died in 2005 um, at the age mm -hmm. of 60 in uh, Seattle, but he was normal originally born in Pittsburgh, which is probably why it's Pittsburgh cycle. Pittsburgh cycle. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just remember in theater classes, it and even just English classes in in high school, maybe maybe even earlier. Uh, I think we read Fences, and uh, I remember Ma Rainey's Black Bottom being mentioned. I don't remember if I actually read it originally, but really really great. Uh, two of his plays received the the. Pittsburgh or Pulitzer Prize for dra drama and two others won the Tony Award for best play. Mm -hmm. uh, and a, after his uh, death in 2006, uh, Wilson was inducted into the American Theater Hall of Fame. So uh, this he really is a a an important part of of Black American as well as American culture um especially in theater so uh i'm yeah i'm really happy that denzel is uh, uh taken on to this and, and trying to get the full thing adapted to films yeah. um to get that broader audience because um so all i remember is i've, I've liked these i love these plays so yeah um yay one of the things um i did first one of my first few years here in the city, um, a friend of mine started a um, small company. It didn't last long, but uh, one of her main goals when she first started it was she wanted to read. Um, we did stage readings of all of his plays, all 10 of the plays in the temporary cycle in order. Um, not on the same day, mind you, that would. No, that in would chronological order or order they were, they were written? Chronological order, mm. chronological order. Mm. Um, and the idea being, um, they, they were stage readings. They weren't like full on productions, mind you. This was all just kind of, right. she had some actor friends and we all came together and we read, you know, read some of the plays um, in different spaces here in town. And the main goal was of that was to, like you were saying, Jeff, to bring awareness of these, these plays. Um, other theater companies here in towns after that have since um, done productions of some of the plays. Um, I know the most the most recent one was Sydney that was done at um, our larger like like theater the um, Playhouse in the Park. So it was and it was very well done. So yeah, it's 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 a they're good plays, so I highly like recommend, like Gary was saying, to to watch this movie. I'm I'm very curious. I will probably sit down and watch it at some point because um, I want to see what you're talking about. Because I actually read a part in this play specifically. So do you remember which one you read? I don't remember off the top of my head. I was trying to look at the list of the character, the cast, and characters. Right. And I don't remember the name. Um, he may not be. Oh, I was I was Sylvester. I was Maude's nephew. Oh, was okay. Small, yeah, right. I was a smaller. Part. But um, I took me a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. So yeah, um, very interesting to see, and also to see what you're talking about from like it feels like it's while it's a movie, it kind of feels like it might be a play adaptation so I'm, I'm curious about that as well 
Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and then I have a second pick uh, for folks that are interested um, over on Hulu. Uh, so, if you're interested or aware of RuPaul's Drag Race, two uh, queens from previous seasons, um, Jinx Monsoon and Benta La Creme, uh, have for about three or four years now been putting on a holiday show of some kind that features the two of them. Um, normally, at this time of year, they would be traveling on tour and they would be producing the show and going to theaters and different cities and perhaps, you know, out of the country. But there's this thing called COVID and a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So uh, Dela and Jinx um, joined together and decided to make a film. And Dela is kind of considered the creator, um, producer. And uh, Dela has stayed pretty true to her theatrical background and roots. Mm -hmm. um, both of them come from that. And uh, Jinx uh, and Major Scales have been doing a lot of touring um, prior to COVID with a, a variety, not a variety show, but like a, a vaudevillian kind of like song and uh you know, a little bit of dance here and there uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're they really two peas in a pod. And Benda La Creme is a very um, Varla Jean Merman uh, is who she looks up to. So she has that <laughs> kind of like campy, quirky, um, obnoxious, like bubbly kind of personality. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so they're quite the foil to each other because Jinx has um, come into her uh, wickedism. Uh mm -hmm. And so they came together and did this, what they call the Jinx and Dela holiday special. So here's the big <laughs> thing about it, though. They wrote, produced, and filmed this entire movie. Like, it's a movie, and it's meant to be in the old Hollywood uh, heyday celebrity holiday shows. So, like, uh, Dean Martin, Judy Garland... Um, you know, mm -hmm. the Sonny and Cher show, like, you know, these old, uh, what we the now Bob consider Hope old specials. Hollywood. Right. So, like, you have kind of, you sort of have guests, there's these little montages, but there's, like, one set. It's kind of like you're in a home, but it's not a real home. You know, it's, so they took all these elements and they blended them together and they wrote a bunch of songs and they did all this thing. And then, uh... Jinx and Dela are guest uh, stars, or you know, in a film called uh, "Well, I can't remember what it's called now." Holiday something um, that's on Hulu, and because of their experience with that, lo and behold, Dela signed a contract with Hulu to take their film that was going to be VOD through their website mm -hmm. and distribute it through Hulu. So it's the first time that a drag queen uh, signed such a major deal with a streaming service, um, specifically for Hulu. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, I was really uh, quite happy and pleased for her. And, you know, of course, you know, Bendela was like, this is insane. Like, who does this? Like, you know, <laughs> like takes their passion, produces an entire thing. Like they made the film. They did all this work. They were going to release it themselves through the website, you know, and have people, you know, pay per view uh, to get it through the website mm -hmm. to watch it kind of a thing. And uh, they were approached by Hulu. And so I will tell you this. I'm sure um, I watched it. Penny. <laughs> I, I would hope that they were properly compensated. Mm -hmm. I will say mm -hmm. this. It is a drag musical holiday movie. Um, mm -hmm. I am honestly surprised Hulu signed on to this because <laughs> it is adult in some moments. Like, it is drag. It is, um, there is a naked man on set who they pixelate. Um, there is, uh, references, <laughs> uh, about sex. Um, there are a whole series of musical numbers. There is some really body things, uh, said and done. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. the, the Hulu, I gotta go back. The Hulu description. Drag queens, yes. sentient eggnog, song and dance, a naked man, hold on to your sugar plums and get ready for a holiday drag spectacular that's as magical as a flying reindeer and as unexpected as a virgin birth. Yes. Uh, puns <laughs> about. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
puns. Yeah. One of my yeah, favorite it's, things. It's so um bad. It's it's something else. I uh I found it quite um hysterical and uh I will admit I was uh, shocked pleasantly <laughs> at times because in my brain I kept going, This is on Hulu? <laughs> I was like all I kept thinking is like, did they watch this before they signed the deal? Like um yeah. It is it is very fun. Um and, and Bendela and uh Jinx have been doing a lot of uh promotions for uh the film that they were in and um also for their their own film uh on Hulu. So yeah, it was um it was good. I was uh I was pleasantly surprised by it and pleased. So yeah. So if you're into that and you're kind of want to see something that's like, you know, uh, fun yet goofy and, and all that jazz, then I hope you enjoy. Mm -hmm. I, guess I, I watched it. Oh, sorry. Keep I was going. just going to say, I've I, I watched it and I, I am in total agreement with Gary that it's like, uh, this is on Hulu? Um, really? <laughs> like... But why? There, why would it be on parts. Hulu? I don't understand this. It's it. This means it's definitely not going to Disney Plus. I mean, <laughs> fair, fair. It Disney, just Disney seems... doesn't own the entire thing of Hulu; just the majority. <laughs> fair. It just seems. I mean, I get it. Like, if 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 I had to pay to see this, I I mean, you know, gone through like their site, I probably I don't know if I would have. I will own that myself. But seeing it and watching it, I'm like, this is it's good. It's funny. It gets the point across. But it's very like I'll 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 say it. It's kind it gets curved at points. And um not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's just it is not what you would expect like a a streaming service to sign up for. But I also think that maybe they would. If that makes sense, like it, it's something to like, you know, it's popular. They're popular. They were gonna, you know, probably make some money on it on their own, and now they, it's now on Hulu, which brings it to brings it to a bigger audience per se. Yeah. Right. So, I, I yeah. think I mean it I is definitively it. kitschy. It's campy. It's also body, um, mm -hmm. and really pokes fun at Christmas themes. Um, yeah, which. I mean, uh, to me, it is it is true and classic to these two drag queens. Um, but I will say this as well. Uh, there were some really good parts of it. And there were some others where I was like, eh, I kind of wish this had been refined. Like, mm -hmm. just, you know, had had some, some tweaks and some other stuff. I feel like in a way, <laughs> it's going to be a horrible thing to say, they sip their own eggnog too much. Like, they were, <laughs> they were having a lot of fun making it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if that was really necessary. And the other thing, like, you know, it's not bad yeah. by any means. Like, yeah. um, it was, it was definitely fun. It has its moments. But they, uh, it they poke, it. they poke fun at and or holes, um, in some of the religious aspects of the season. Uh, mm. so if you are sensitive to those things, you may not want to watch this. Mm-hmm. Because I mean that's why I was trying to say like it's drag queens, it's entertainment. Yeah. So there you go. Like you know, if you if you uh, wanted to, um, if you go into it not knowing that or it kind of ignoring like what a drag show can be like and and what to expect out of drag queens, then well, yeah. yeah. This is not a holiday spirit lifting, um, like movie. This is not your lifetime. Your your hallmark like oh touchy feely movie. This is not that. While it may have those moments, it is not that. <laughs> yeah, it's a it sounds like it's a comedy uh, a variety show, uh, a holiday themed variety show. Something like that. Yes. It, it, yeah. it, it, it involving drag queens, so you know that it's going to be kind of wacky. Yeah. 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 So cool. Yeah, I don't know about you, but. Uh, I think that sounds like the end. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, just confirming yeah. with everybody in case there's something else. <laughs> Play ways to contact us. Pop over to our website, comes out loud.com. Shoot us an email. It comes out loud at gmail.com. Uh, shoot us a voicemail at 361 C. We'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. 
You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud. In the appropriate place of the URL, you can pop over to our Entourage chat where Owen is posting all these links, which are also <laughs> will be posted on our website uh, at Cubs Out Loud in the, uh, or tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can uh, get uh, subscribe to our calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col so you can see when we're planning on streaming these shows so you can join us live. Uh, you can find various merchandise and such as a Cubs Out Loud shirt, a Consent is My Four Play shirt. Sorry, we don't have any comfy styles, but that's because Zazzle doesn't offer those. We're just commenting on what people are wearing. That's all. Um, but you can find. But you can find a whole bunch of different things over at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, don't forget that also they also have other countries so you can get better shipping uh, if you're not in the U.S. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, shoot us some cash at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud if you just want to send us money directly for some reason. Uh, you can subscribe to us and rate us on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to us at Google Play Podcasts, uh, Google Play, Amazon, and Audible. Um, you can find me anywhere in the internet at uh, box, box, puppy box, cub box, tech box, there other, uh, and Windgem, W Y N D G E M, over on Twitch, where I've been streaming some WoW as well as the live stream of Bears and Dragons, which happened earlier on the same day that we record these shows. <gasps> you can see me for like six hours a day, yeah, all on Sunday. <laughs> Actually, it was Neat. only like three and something uh, earlier because we have a problem where some people are uh, are, are engaged. I have the, I have a similar problem that I have for the show that I do with my my D and D game. Anyways, that's me, Damon. If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub Seven Nine on most bear related sites or on Facebook, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everybody! Ciao for now! <laughs> <laughs>